I'm Jason Greach, uh, farm here at Northwest Iowa, precision planning dealer and carry other planning attachments and different things. So we got cow calf operation, finish operation, finish cattle, and uh, corn and beans. So I guess, I guess part of the reason I trust it because we've been using their uh, lick tubs and on our cattle operation and seeing a big difference in calf health when we brought calves home from out west. Um, pretty much had a lot of issues with coccidiosis and after we started feeding the tubs on bringing, bringing them home, um, helped for um, the stress on the cattle and kind of never had problems with coccidiosis anymore. Um, so that, that was a big deal and after seeing those results, it made, us, made me real comfortable trying it on, um, on our acres. Um, I, we've tried, we're working with a, a different research outfit that gives us all new products to go to market before they get on market. So I, we've tried a lot of different things, a lot of different things. Um, definitely not afraid to try because if you don't, hey, I, I, I just soon fail and I learn. So if you don't try, you don't know. Um, so we do a lot of that. So, but I had enough faith in Real Max or Real Nutrition because with the, the results I've seen on the cow herd and the calf herd uh, made me real confident to we use it on every acre this year. We use it a couple different ways. We use it in furrow, we use it foliar, um, use it with herbicide, use it just straight. Um, so we've tried a lot of different things on all our acres. So I didn't do it um, just strictly just controlled tests. I, I had enough faith in the product I wanted on every acre. Um, that being said, we've seen some of the best yields we've seen in, in quite a few years and lack of rainfall. Um, more than last year, but uh, still way behind. I'd, I'd say on the corn side, I'd, I'd be real comfortable say at least 10 bushel. Um, you know, and there's definitely places that we've seen the largest corn averages I've seen on the farm. Um, contribute that to some Definitely on the riso green side, definitely push that stuff higher. Um, soybean side, we've seen, I'd say at least same thing, five to 10 easy, easy bushels. Um, one neat thing that I did, I did a test for um, a company that come out and do soil samples and they do soil samples and then they DNA test it to see what sort of pressure you're gonna have on rootworm. We do a lot of corn on corn and that farm's been corn for 12 plus years. They come back, they wouldn't tell me the results. I did, did my control as I normally do, but then I'd leave 10 acres of that farm with non-rootworm trait corn and no insecticide. And the only control I had was from last year was beetle bombing and, and foliar or um, fungicide. And then this year was just with Rhizogreen. Um, they come, and did root digs, brought them back, pressure washed them off, and scored the roots. And I was amazed on the, some of the, vis visibly seeing the roots, how they were fed on, and then right where they were fed on, normally they just die. And this is where the roots just exploded and grew way more roots. It was incredible. If you don't have a root mass, you're not gonna have yield. You gotta have the factory to pull in nutrients, to pull in water. Um, that's the only way you're gonna feed, feed, feed a plant. Nitrogen, we're probably, I even once in a while, I don't even like to tell people how much we use because they look at us like, there's no way you could have a corn crop putting that little amount of nitrogen on. Um, we're kind of a one and done, I guess. We use it all uh, UAN springtime with our herbicide, um, but then we rely on everything else we got in the, uh, on, in the farm. You know, We rely on our cattle manure, um, we got a little bit of hog manure we use, but the major majority of it's all manure. We don't buy, the only commercial fertilizer we buy is uh, 32%. So that being said, I think the riso green is helping the roots grow, feed the microorganisms to release our nutrients in the, in the, in the farm to the plant. And, and you know, that being said, this year was the first year using it, but it, we're every acre again next year. Um, I, I see that it's helping feed the plant with the little amount of rain we're getting, it's pulling in all the nutrients it's need 
to feed that plant when we can get the rain. Typically, you know, guys are putting a pound of end per the amount of bushels they're getting. We're putting half of that on and seeing, and still seeing good results. Um, the thing we might think about doing for next year is possibly splitting it up, putting a little bit broadcast and then possibly putting some end on with the planter. Um, or if I don't do it with the planter, we're gonna come back and try some acres side dress um, to see if we can split that application up to help us out or maybe even pull the nitrogen back even further. Um, see how the spring goes, I guess, and see what we get done and, and um, put, you know, we can put conceal from precision on the planter. That's a big thing I'm thinking about putting on to add to the operation to put nitrogen on them with the planter. So that's the starter part of the stuff where we put, we don't buy a lot of P, P and K, so we're, we're using what the manure we got and we're putting that to starter, we're putting that, we're allocating those dollars we normally put to, to P and K to other resources to unlock what we got already out there um, to give it to feed our plant. I guess, you know, I'm the fifth generation. Um, actually, where, where we're at now is where they homesteaded and, and uh, this is, I don't know what the, it's been a century farm for since I was a kid. So it's, this has been in the Grage name for, for a long time. Um, plan to keep it that way, trying to give the opportunity to have my kids possibly get in the operation and, and my brother's kids um, to keep, keep it going. You know, and it's fun, you know, you like doing it and uh, you want to give them an opportunity to try to do the same. Try farm, try a couple farms or try, try split an 80 or a quarter and or split a couple farms. I guess I had enough faith in it, you know, we, we did every acre, you know, and I, I just had a feeling we we're going to see good results. Um, I, I would challenge a few guys just to try it. You know, I mean, you're not out a lot. Commodity prices are high enough where you can, you know, bank on some of those dollars to try it in different ways. Um, I just challenge you to try it. You know, give it, a, give it a try and see what happens and track it. Do some digs. Um, I was impressed when we did some root digs. I was definitely impressed. So.